I love you. Hello and welcome back to the Couch Potatoes to another riveting episode. I am the Green Traveler from Gorsh. And I am the Faceless Leon. This is Green and Faceless on the Couch, a podcast about movies and TV. Nice. I thought you had said I'm an enema. I, I am an enema. An em- an em- <laughs> I am in the faceless Leon. I like how you roll it there. That's a... awesome. <laughs> I am in the... <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. What I've been I did. Li- it's in the past. I've been reading a lot of. Uh, yeah, I've been reading a lot of Charles Dickens, and he he writes his dick his diction. Dickens oh, writes yeah. his diction so uh-huh. very like. I mean, I don't know if you how much you've read of it, but like it's very like he has his dumb characters, and when they oh. when they're dumb, they're dumb. And the, it, the diction signifies that very well. Right, right. And, and so now whenever people talk, all I'm picturing is like, you know, he, he would just say, I'm anima when you said that. I, I'm in the faceless Leon. It would have been like, I am A-N-A, like just one word, <laughs> faceless Leon. And I'm just like, <laughs> it makes me want to improve my dialogue game when I write my own self. Well, you know. They, uh, being Charles Dickinson, uh, that was kind of like all they did. Dickens? Yeah. Dickinson. Dickens. Yeah. Emily Dickinson and Charles Dickinson. That's (laughs) their baby. baby. Charles Dickinson. Charles Dickinson. Charlie Dickinson. I mean, that is the, that is the more fascinating part of, of Charles Dickens is his dialogue, but we're not here. No. To talk about book club. That's not what we do here. <laughs> it's here. No, this is movie club. Um, this is and movie club, baby. We are talking about some black artists. Uh, who, yes. Uh, you know, musical artists in particular who really uh, furthered music in general, but also uh, black music. Uh, that yeah. really. Uh, black entertainment. A lot. Black entertainment. Yeah, um, they they really these two in particular really brought like gospel and R and B to the, uh, the living rooms folks. of white people. I, I that's why I I mean seriously, and you know, it's and true, the way the true, world yeah. worked back then, that was a sign that you uh, had made it. Uh, was yeah. if you were playing to white crowds and stuff. Um, Unfortunately, yeah. um, because that's how Bad our man. country is still a little but bit, but yeah, it really is. But that's the important of this episode. That's why it's uh, yeah. That's why it's become uh, a tradition of ours. I mean, if we uh, February is Black History Month here in America, right. and so we want to do what we can and learn what we can, that's and right. you know, be less ignorant, yeah. be ignorant. And I always feel ignorant. just a little ignorant when we do this, but I I feel like yeah I feel like it's uh it's an exercise in empathy that we maybe could do more often than not. But I feel yeah. like we try to uh, keep up with uh, you know black performers in film uh, pretty well, um, right? But <clears throat> yeah, so you know as as uh, two white individuals uh, well you're more green than i am yeah yeah but in, in reality for this episode <laughs> I, I i am a white individual yes um but uh, that's just my human skin and that's other just episode. the human skin that's right <laughs> um so we it's hard to say what like our place is but we are definitely movie critics so us reviewing and rating these movies that's that's kind of our job and we're just using this time this month to you know kind of focus on people who matter to the culture and uh yeah, yeah so we're we hope that this uh you know uh, perpetuates uh good vibes and tolerance and uh, love and all that, uh, and uh, yeah, let's dive in. Let's talk about let's these 
two legends. Yeah, we're uh, we're pitting pitting uh, Ray versus Get On Up. That's two right. Two films I had not seen. Um, Ray is, of course, Ray Charles, mm-hmm. and Get On Up is uh, James Brown. That's right. And I have a um, when it comes to Ray Charles, I remember listening to his albums a lot. I don't remember if my grandma had them. I don't think so. But I, I definitely listened to, you know, his his records, like, actually on a, on a record player because I, I loved that shit as a kid. Um, so I had I have a little more relation with Ray Charles than I do with uh, James Brown because my, my big – this is going to be sad. This is going to be very sad. My big uh, connection to James Brown was the Eddie Murphy skits that he would always do. Um, I can't remember if it's Delirious or Raw, but he does an impression of James Brown. And I knew that way more than I ever knew a James Brown song until I was a teenager. It was like, I don't know, just Eddie Murphy's impressions were fucking great. And, you know, when we watched the movie Get On, well, when I watched Get On Up and uh, Chadwick Boseman's amazing performance of James Brown, I was like, damn, Eddie Murphy nailed it. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> well, you know, I'll be honest. Fucking J- Boseman fucking nailed it. I mean, Boseman that, fucking nailed it. Too. I, I mean, so that's how I knew Eddie Fox Murphy nailed as it. Ray Charles. They, they both oh, of yeah. these performances right out the gate, we can both say objectively very good. Like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody so can good. argue with that. Um, yeah. But- <clears throat> We are going to start with Ray first. It was the uh, the earlier film, 2007. Four? Oh, I thought it came out in 2004. But that's when... Uh, the other one's 2014. No, oh, it, it is a 2004, 2004 movie. Yeah. I wrote it down in my notes wrong. Oh, my oh, goodness. Well. Um, yeah, 2004. The Even 2004 earlier. was also the same year that Ray Charles died. And they do, I believe, yeah. at the end of the film... Uh, dedicated to his memory, which is yeah. um, he. Uh, you know, probably... He's actually going to see the movie. He had planned to be there, uh, but died before uh, before it premiered. That's um, and that's one bad. thing about uh, about Ray that I didn't actually check on Get On Up, but with the movie Ray, um, it had Ray Charles' approval. Mm. You know, he he read. Uh, you know, they they sent him the script beforehand or whatever, and he only changed like two things, I think. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I think that since this is such that Get On Up was such a recent production, it probably didn't have a chance to to ask yeah. James Brown because he passed away in two thousand six. Yeah, I don't. That's that that makes Ray a little more. You know, I don't know if it's more accurate, but like it definitely had. It's, you know, it's kind of yeah. like Rocket Man with Elton John, where it had that right. person's seal of approval, and and just like with uh, with rocket man with elton john um he you know he made sure that i mean even the bad stuff was presented yeah yes. it's, it's very much yeah. on on focus with ray now do um, are we seeing every bad side of ray charles Prob- probably not, not. Sure. probably but, not um but the, the, the biggest things yes i i would say like his, the things to know the, what are affecting his relationships and to make a compelling movie we see yeah, exactly, and and from the the brief little re, like biography that I read on on Wikipedia, I'm sure there were other stuff that w- that was bad, but I feel like those were the main things. Even the biography picked right. out was like the man had uh, as 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 this movie f- shows a lot. He had a, a bit of a sexual addiction. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, not like, just that. He had a general addiction problem, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was highly addicted to uh, heroin, which, I mean, anybody who does heroin is highly addicted to it, obviously. Um, but oh, yes. He, he um, you know, he, he manages it pretty well at first. Um, cause yeah. he starts fairly early in his career, e- even though, uh, his friend who is also getting high on it, uh, Fathead Newman played by Bukim Woodbine. He's like, Hey, listen, we were about to do this, but you don't want any part of this. You will, this will right. be your life from now on. So he's warned yeah. beforehand and he's still goes for it and in any time that anybody asks him for for junk he says no you don't want to be a part of this 
It, yeah. It, yeah, he does force his like uh, it, it, one of his girlfriends. Yeah, she wants and to try to hit up. Uh, one of the singers in his group, I believe yeah. they were Margaret. Let me see. It's Margie something. I'll find it. Margie Hendrix. I think that might be right. By Regina, played by Regina King. I didn't yep, recognize that's her. right. Yep. Uh, you know what? I didn't quite recognize her as Regina King. That's for sure. When I was watching it, uh, it awesome. you know, this was uh, twenty years ago now, pretty much. Uh, right. So, but she, I mean, she is uh, just, just iconically beautiful. I think. Um, yeah. <clears throat> if Beale Street could talk, oh, someday we'll review that. Oh yeah, I love that for movie. sure. But yeah, uh, if you don't know, Ray Charles is blind. I, I guess yeah, I yeah, we kind of <laughs> skipped over that. Uh, he is the, the a famous piano player and songwriter in the uh, blues, gospel, and R and B um, yeah. genres. Yeah, and the 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 film kind of like juxtaposes his childhood throughout like they just like throw it like little bits and pieces of his childhood into the into the story whenever it's going to like either shock the most or it's right. very textbook out that's what i'm hinting at is a lot of the the script is textbook which isn't bad it's very compelling still i mean and it, it does the the biopic just right you know it, it hits all the right notes um but like the his his childhood what you finally glean from it all is you know at a very young age uh he saw his brother die his brother tripped and fell into like a washing bin kind of thing um and he didn't help him he thought his brother yeah. was just joking and just watched his brother drown or joke um i guess in, in i guess in in real life um he actually did try to ray did try to save his brother but his brother was just too heavy mm. um he he was and he was a young kid he couldn't he, apparently he couldn't do it um, but I guess that was one of the changes that he was, he was fine with keeping one of the historically inaccurate spots because it does help the movie because that's part yeah. of his, his dilemma, you know, growing up in it as his character develops throughout right. the movie. Um, so it's, it's really fascinating, but yeah, he, he watches his brother die and not too long after he loses his vision. Mm -hmm. Um, when I don't he was know. seven years old according to the film. Yeah. And, and he had to put like this, like the salve on like this like uh ointment yeah, kind it of was thing. something that to try to keep the the uh welling mucusy tears that he had going on yeah uh away uh but i think he had some kind of ocular uh uh okay uh, uh, well, that what was, is the word I'll degeneration ocular degeneration yeah. i think that's but that is rather young for that to happen so i don't know uh right Cause I didn't, I didn't look it up, but I was curious if it was the salve that caused him to go blind. Like I don't this, know, like this weird medicine I think thing. He, I think at least according to the film, he was already his vision Going was already blind. blurring before yeah. they started giving him the medicine. And when well, I say he just they, glasses. <laughs> he, maybe he just needed glasses. No, he def like. Definitely went blind. Uh, so no, no, I meant, I meant when his vision was just going blurry. Like Maybe. once it was starting. I don't know, but he, like, I, he yeah. had those very goopy, goopy tears, which is yeah. another symptom of uh, of ocular degeneration. I'm pretty sure. You, um, right. Uh, it runs in my grandpa's side of the family. So, uh, anyways, uh, he was born. Ray Robinson, by the way, Ray Charles Robinson. <laughs> and I mentioned yes. that just to say that his mother, Aretha Robinson, is played by Sharon Warren. And uh, she's uh, like, <clears throat> she just washes clothes and uh, she is, she instills a lot of uh, some distrust into Ray, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. To, especially towards like money and things like that but he also is very good at not being cheated and finding out when somebody is cheating him yeah. so uh it, it it's actually like a, a really cool character trait of ray charles in the film is that you know even though he's blind he's not going to let you take advantage of him 
He, he, yeah. And, and, and he, 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 he learns knows how, how to, to get around himself. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. He's, he's very, he was very self-sufficient and he made damn sure of it. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things too that make the, the, you know, the drug addiction angle very interesting because obviously it did happen. He was addicted to it. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's very, it's very fascinating because you see that a lot with, with, you know, drug addicts. Like there's a lot of stories and, and, you know, people I know who they're very, you know, focused on being self-sufficient, being, you know, independently capable. And yet they harbor themselves with this drug addiction mm. where it's just like you would, you would expect them to, you know, want the exact opposite because, you right. know, obviously you're not self-sufficient if you're addicted to something. You yeah. Need that uh, that which, thing. Which is very much the message of the movie. I mean, it's fa- basically right. the last scene where you have this uh, dream sequence. Uh, you know, I'm going way deep into the movie, obviously. But oh, he it's goes, totally fine. He goes to I mean, rehab it really finally. Well to his youth. Yeah, he finally goes to rehab, and he has these dreams uh, uh, while he's going through withdrawal about his mother. And she's like, you don't need that stuff anymore. You you said you wouldn't be anybody's fool or something like that, but you were a fool to this. And yeah. and you know he, it, it, he he never touched it again after he went to rehab. Right. Yeah, and it's like it, it is very good. Like I really like that empowering moment. Uh, the film is very long. It's like two yes. hours and thirty. Something yeah, like two that. Two hours thirty two. Very long. It is very and, long, uh, but I will say right here and now that I really dislike the ending because, like, there's that yeah, really powerful, so mo- there's that really powerful moment at the rehab center, and then that's yeah. it. They just they cut to a collage of Ray Charles and start yeah. with the title cards, and then they have one other scene. And you know, I know it's a biopic, pick, so you don't want to right. to change history too much. But it's not like Ray Charles stopped living after he went to rehab. No, no. Uh, yeah, they really just focused on 30, 30 years of his life. And, yeah. and the last like 10 of those years were like super fast. Yes. Like, yes. And, you know, and, and I, I'm sure they kind of felt that Charles. way for Charles, but for Ray Charles, because right. he was high yeah. all the time. That's, that's fair. That's very fair. But uh, oh oh, I, I remember what I was gonna say. Like for me, what why why I don't like the ending is because and and again, as you mentioned, they can't change real right. life. You know, they can't change the history too much in this regard. Um, but it's because you get an ending to one of the major aspects of his life, which is the the his addiction right. and his struggle to to you know be self empowered. But the other, the other issue, the big issue of his life, his cheating, his chronic cheating of, of on his Which wife, is on very it, much on highlighted. Was, like he he yeah. has a relationship with Margie Hendricks, as we've already mentioned, and uh, I believe it's Marianne Fisher played by Anne uh, Janu Ellis, but I could be wrong. Anjanu. Anjanu. Um, Anjanu. <clears throat> she. I believe. Uh, she was uh, his lead backup vocalist before he hired Margie Hendrix group who become uh yeah. the Ray Letts. Is that right? Yeah, I think it was the Ray Letts, yeah. Um yeah. and uh so he was sleeping with her and as soon as this other group came in he was obviously interested in Margie and Marianne was like, uh fuck you and left. Yeah. <laughs> and like he yeah he just kept doing that where where he would have like numerous girlfriends while on the road mm. while still married to his wife um and you know at the end there's just like a tiny blurb that he he divorces her or well she divorces him to be more mm. accurate and and then he like he had like 12 other kids i think he had, he i think when he passed he had 12 kids Holy shit. and like you know, only a few of those were with his wife, and all the other ones were like out of kind of out of wedlock kind of thing. Mm. And like and he was, that was something that he was kind of worried about because his father had three different families, and yeah, uh, yeah. but yet he just you know he's on an on the road musician. It's a classic story. You meet a lot of women, women or who or people of the sex that you're attracted to, rather, <laughs> and 
you and they're impressed with you because you're a talented musician so it yeah. you know it's it's your it's an easier in for you um and he does this thing uh ray charles does oh gosh yeah where yeah. He, he to try to determine if the woman is good looking or not he shakes their hand and then he feels up their wrist their in their forearm yeah. And uh, <laughs> really, he just ends up with, you know, thin armed ladies. Um, but, mm-hmm. you know, he, a lot of the times that's what he, he thought was attractive. Well, yes, that's right. And, you know, yeah, this that, might be what he was attracted stigmata. to when he was a little boy. But like, right. Uh, also, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say that it's not OK for him to have a beauty standard in mind right but he That's is fair. blind like <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> you think if anybody would like- be fine with it (laughs) that's like that's my biggest like my one of my big issues is like i am you know i have a very specific attraction and so typically you know i'm not in a lot of relationships because i'm not very attracted to a lot of people yeah and i feel like you know if if it would be even though i don't ever want to be blind right get me wrong i love reading and obviously if i were to go blind i would just learn braille this this but, podcast would be a lot different. <laughs> it would be so much different. It would be so much different. We'd start talking about radio. <laughs> Did you catch Did really... the new tune? Oh. <sighs> <sighs> that would be so sad. No, I don't. I, that is one of my big fears is going blind. No, um, me too. But at the same time, w- trying to be positive, like, because I always try to find the positive. I think that I would be so, so much less superficial in regards to like my relationships with people because I would no longer like care what that person looked like because I couldn't see them sadly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I think I I did think it was very hilarious that he was very, you know, he was very much like, and I think it was kind of like a, um, or at least in the film, it kind of felt like a, an image kind of thing. He wanted to be seen with beautiful women. He didn't care Mm -hmm. if they were actually beautiful, but that's like, it's yeah. possible, but he definitely likes sex. I I don't know if it was more oh, than yeah. once, but he definitely says there's nothing better than sex, and that's when that's when <laughs> he's about to first shoot up. Actually, uh, the the other person, not Fathead, I don't remember what that character's name, and there's not in it that much of the movie. When he offers him the drug, he says it's better than sex, baby, and Ray's like, there's nothing better than sex, and then <laughs> he gets high. <laughs> and then it gets high. And then it gets high. Yeah. Uh, I guess that kind of drug isn't last... fun, kids. No, no. Don't yeah. do drugs. Unless doctor prescribed or if you, you know. Or if you, you really, to. really want to. <laughs> <laughs> We're the worst. Well, don't do it. <laughs> don't do don't it. Do it. <laughs> oh, God. There is one last uh, storytelling thing that I thought was important to note, um, mm. which was his. Uh, um, it, it was during the civil rights era, um, right? There was segregated audience, and mm. you know there was. Uh, I can't remember if it was after. I, I might be mixing it up with Get On Up. I can't remember if it was after Martin Luther King had I been assassinated it was before in this movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because there was a moment where he was, uh, he, he visited Georgia and he was, you know, there was, uh, protests going on. People were like, we can't watch your, you know, come in to watch your, uh, concert because it's, uh, um, segregated, right. uh, venue. And so he, you know, he, he refused, I think he refused to play, right? And he got arrested. Well, at first he was like, there's nothing, at first he said, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. And then, uh, the, this young man uh, said something, uh, and one last time, Ray's like, there really is nothing I can do, now let me go. And he starts walking on. But the guy who's ushering him in, the guy who runs the venue, a racist white guy, starts saying, now you back the fuck off and take this trash with you, talking about the rest of the people. And he's like, no, right. no. Nah, nah. You know what? You're right. I can't do this. You're right, young man. And and you know he yeah, he he, he makes damn sure. I like how he does it. He makes damn sure in the movie, anyways, yeah. that the young man knows that 
he's he is realizing that the young man is right like right it, yeah he he was wrong to think that it was okay and um he, he, did, he doesn't get arrested he just gets banned he gets banned georgia. from georgia which was his home state yeah what city and he, he, had, he had that yeah he had that beautiful song georgia on my mind i guess it's beautiful i, I didn't that's not <laughs> one of my favorite ray charles one with their songs honestly but I, it is important to note that you know at the end uh in the title card he receives an official apology from yes. <laughs> georgia and they yeah. and they made that song their state song yeah. so it's like there is a message of advancement you know throughout right. the film as well and Definitely. you know the world develops as ray develops so it's yeah. like there's this other it's well returning done. motif or whatever you want to call it where he's getting cheated by different people um mm. and the at first it's by the white people that are running the country band that he is in there then it is um uh the guy running the band um that uh, the jazz band that he's playing piano in and oh oh actually before that it's that woman uh who basically oh, he yeah, gets to yeah. live with her if he has sex with her <laughs> yeah i remember that yeah yeah and uh <laughs> oh dude it, it, the guy who played the first uh war machine in in marvel uh oh shit what the fuck is his name but anyways he uh oh terrence howard there that's right yeah is that right Ter- yeah i think so let me look up his face yeah yeah Rhodey and iron man yes yeah. yep yep and anyhow he uh they're cheating him like just hardly paying him anything of of what he should be earning and yeah. so he and he's just really good at figuring out that people are cheating him and then the, another person does it because he's blind like they do it because he's green and from the country the next people right. do it because he's blind and then after that it's his friends because he's not treating them very well he's not paying right. them enough and they they're finding out about it and they're like okay well he maybe he won't notice if i take this a little bit off the top i think i deserve it and you know that's not a very good thing for a friend to do but oh, yeah. uh but he wasn't being a very good friend himself he wasn't being a very good friend yeah 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 there's a lot of good messages i really do like it um i guess just to to go in a closing statement with it you know it's it is a very competent and uh very entertaining biopic mm-hmm. uh, and james fox he won the academy award for it yeah he should uh, have. and he yeah. yeah rightly deserved like real so fucking good performance like he, he i don't know if he had like things to keep his eyes closed or like uh you know i'm sure he he method acted on set you know he was probably you know walked around blind and rehearsed everything blind but like i don't know if he did anything to his eyes but there's one moment where he is adult jane uh, uh <laughs> adult ray charles and you know he's it's a vision scene he's in the he's in a dream and you know he, he's he can see mm-hmm. and and you see james you know jamie fox and i was just like it's so amazing the t- the, the amount of talent he do- he's yes. done throughout this whole film that like I'm only seeing and Ray they, Charles as you're watching it, and then at the end, when during that vision scene, I'm like, "Oh, right, it's Jamie Fox!" Like, you know, <laughs> it's like I, you know, it was I completely forgot. like, "There's his I eyes, knew there's was. his beautiful eyes." <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like I knew, I knew the that it was Jamie Fox really the whole time. Good. Obviously, the makeup, yeah, that's is what I'm saying. Really like, good. he and his and his absolute just dive into this character. Yeah. That when when there's one moment where he doesn't have his sunglasses on and where he can you know where where his vision is fine and his eyes aren't uh where he's like like not like you know his eyes aren't squeezed shut right and you can just see everything and then it's just like oh my god I completely you know it's like of course I knew this was Jamie Foxx but it was such a damn yeah. good performance that I was just seeing Ray Charles like such a deserved Academy Award one hundred percent man so when I mean he, he raises out, the whole film. <sighs> When he finds out that a certain person dies at the end, right oh, before yeah. he goes to yeah. uh, rehab, and he just yeah. leaves the room and then just breaks down in the far end of the shot. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. 
It is a, such a damn good performance. Like, it's very moving. He he raises the whole film an entire half star oh, by himself. Like, because I I would give this film a three star rating. It's a it's a textbook biopic. It gets all the the plot points right. It hits all the right moments. It's very entertaining. But his performance alone is just so fucking yeah. captivating and riveting that like it, it's a three and a half star film now. That's awesome. Like, that's yeah. great. I I think it's deserving of that. Yeah, I think if he wasn't playing Ray Charles that it would have been a very average uh, biopic movie, but his performance is just so good. Um, Not to say that other people's performance weren't so good, but the movie's just so focused on Ray Charles and that, I mean, that's what the movie's about. Um, But uh, some people that I feel like before we move on that we should mention, I will say that it's a full face movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, and, um, <clears throat> I just didn't like the ending. I thought the ending yeah. felt a little, I don't know, kind of felt like a cop out really. Uh, yeah, they don't, they don't, cause I mean, they can't pull aspects of their hero forth that weren't actually there. Right. And that's, you know, like, right. They, but they, they just, just don't finish just off Just a little bit more relationships. closing action, please. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there was another 10 minutes of this movie that you could have cut elsewhere to make the ending feel good. <laughs> so true. <laughs> uh, so some other people that I wanted to mention because we didn't really mention uh, very many people is uh, Carrie Washington, who plays his wife, uh, Della B, uh, excuse me, Della B. Robinson, who he just calls B. Uh, Clifton Powell, who plays Jeff Brown, uh, who is a longtime uh, band member and friend. Um, until they're falling out. Uh, and then we also have Curtis Armstrong playing Amet, uh, Ertigan, uh, a- alongside Richard Schiff playing Jerry Rexler, Wexler. Uh, I, bl- I felt like they were, uh, a-, a very good duo, uh, and their, right. the way that their relationships, uh, kind of, you know, mirrored and contrary each other with Ray. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, you know, like they, they both were, they both really liked working with Ray, obviously. Right. Uh, but for Jerry's character, uh, Jerry felt that, you know, it's more about the business where Ahmet was like fucking in love with Ray Charles. And, and their relationship <laughs> is really cute, honestly. I, I, yeah. but you know, they just don't. You know, people know more now how to get people help, I think, than they did back yeah. then. And, and these guys just really didn't know what to do with Ray and his addiction problem. Uh, but one right. thing I wanted to say, besides the fact that I really liked Ahmet, is that um, he's he's a Turkish <laughs> character, and you know, it's. Uh, you know, old Hollywood shit, but I just, just sometimes you, it's like, oh my god, it's 2004, they're still doing this. Um, and, yeah. and you know, maybe there's not that many Turkish actors, but Curtis Armstrong is of uh, Italian descent, and I'm pretty sure they put some makeup on to make him look a little more olive toned, and yeah, that's just him. not great. I mean, you know, if they yeah. if you really can't find somebody of the <laughs> of the ethnic background. Like, right. it, I think it's okay. It's okay to cast somebody, yeah, they went, but you don't have to make them up. You don't. They went, yeah, they went so hard for look alone, I think. Yeah. Because, like, if you look up the photo of Ahmet, like, Curtis Armstrong looked that pretty well, you know, but I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. It's like, I think it's more... And I wouldn't have even thought anything, honestly. I would not have even thought of anything if they didn't have a single line where Curtis Armstrong's like, I'm Turkish. Right. Like, he literally just says that. And then I was immediately like, all right, I'm pulling out my phone to see if Curtis Armstrong yeah, is actually Turkish. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and, you know, I, to, our, I don't to the best think... of our knowledge, he's not. No, to the best of our knowledge, he's not. And now, uh, uh, you know, Rome, Anatolia, close, have a lot of history together. But... I, d- I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little uh, bit. Maybe a little bit. Who knows? Uh, not enough for a scholarship. <laughs> not enough, probably. Uh, but, you know, I think the fact that he is Turkish is important to that meeting because 
it kind of breaks the ice between him and Ray a little bit because yeah, Ray, as of other black people, especially of the period, were just trusting of white people. Uh, rightfully so <laughs> yeah uh so that that does break the ice between them and make him a little bit more willing to work with him it's also a different things that ahmet says so it wasn't necessary i guess 100 percent necessary but i thought it helped their relationship and right i just think the main problem and you know people can correct me if i'm wrong i think the main problem is the makeup like yeah y- you don't have to do that like if you literally yeah. can't find somebody of the same ethnic descent, then do not make somebody into the same ethnic right. descent. Don't do just that. Change the character. Like you don't have to. Like, especially yeah, with a nonfiction character. like based story, like you don't have to change the character completely. Right. But I mean, you can still at the same time. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you just know? could just not mention that they're Turkish, but then at the same time, maybe exactly. that's not sensitive. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We ignit, as we, we said. Ignit. But anyhow. Uh, one last person. Uh, I, I forgot that he was in this film, honestly, but Warwick Davis has a Oh, that's part right. A very movie. small part. Yeah. The, the two people that were cheating him when he first got to the city, uh, yeah. he was working with them. <laughs> and it's the first person that he smoked grass with in the film. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He gave him grass. Yeah. Uh, Warwick Davis, Warwick honestly, Davis is a so really cool. good part in this. He, he's good in this. Yeah. Uh, I, I love him when he's on stage introducing the, the acts. He's really good. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for reminding what is, me. Uh, what is your your closing statement on it? Oh, I thought I gave it. I gave it a, a face. Anyways. Oh. Uh, I think oh, yeah. we're ready for a soda pop break. I agree with you. Let's take one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. I love you. Yeah, that actor's the actor's name is Michael Papa John. I wonder if he's related to the Papa John. Uh, I'm gonna guess not, because I believe that na- guy's name is John something. <laughs> I just don't know what it is. John, John Papa John. I'm sorry. Michael I have Papa a feeling John. that his real gonna... name is not Michael Papa John. But maybe when he got discovered, his name was Michael, and he was working at Papa John's. And no, I mean it, it says here. Uh, it, it says here, nicknamed Poppy, Papa John was an outfielder for. I mean, I, I, in 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 college at LSU, when he was an outfielder at the, for the LSU Tigers. Okay, he was he was apparently nicknamed Poppy, so he was at least going by the name Papa John. In college, okay, but so that's I, I assume it's his, his real name. name. I assume I it is. Is it one word? It's one word. P a p a j o h n. Papa John. Okay, welcome back. His, his first name is Michael. We, I think we've been back for a little bit. And I, uh, who who is this uh, in this film, or is it in in Ray? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in Get On Up. It's uh, he he is billed as nineteen forty nine cop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, we're we're calling so much attention to a name. I'm so hey, sorry, Michael. No, whoa, John. whoa, whoa! Now hold a minute. There is a segment of this show that we have not done. Super strange side character. We have not done oh. this in a while. So that's true. Uh, this I super strange say, uh, our, side our character. Animal. <laughs> Welcome to. <laughs> if you want to do an ad moment, we'll throw that in right now. If you like us, go to patreon.com. Slash... <laughs> we are not. But if you <laughs> want to sponsor us, you can go to patreon.com slash green and faceless and check out our tiers there. Uh, you can Is help that... <laughs> suggest for the potato pick, and you can also find our episodes for bangers and hash. What else do we know? Cop. Michael Papa John from. <laughs> Surprisingly, uh, he is the guy who shot Ben in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man <laughs> films. <laughs> Uncle Ben, if you're not familiar with, with Peter Parker. So there you go. The, you have his face in your mind now. Uh, in less... Michael Sheen? Martin Sheen? Martin Sheen? Was, was that? that? No, was I don't he? think so. Who was it? in the Uncle Ben... Uh, I guess I could just clip on Michael Papa John here and click on Spider-Man trilogy. 
Oh. Spider-Man 1. This guy looks a lot like my great uncle Lee. Oh, Cliff Cliff Robertson. Cliff Robinson. Okay. Oh my gosh. I accidentally clicked on uh Uncle Ben's uh Wikipedia page and the pi- the picture that they have up there looks just like the character the actor that portrayed him in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Martin Sheen played Uncle Ben in, in Andrew Garfield's oh, Spider-Man films. Oh, I see. That's why I remember Uncle Ben as Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen is Uncle Ben. But the, you're talking about the guy in the Sam Raimi, though, that uh, uh, Michael Papa John was in Sam Raimi. Yeah. Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. Right, okay. right. Yeah, well, he's the one with the frosted tips. As far as we know, Michael Papa John is not related to... The 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 pizza franchise, <laughs> <laughs> and nor are we, and nor are nor are we, nor wow. are we, nor are we. <laughs> and I believe that brings us to the end of super side uh, super strange side character because I don't know oh, what else to say about him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's talk James Brown, man. Let's talk uh, the the Godfather of Soul. Is that what his name that was? Am I is that right. right. Uh, the Godfather of What other names did he have Funk? here? Or is it Soul? Uh, Mr. Dynamite. Mr. Dynamite. Soul Brother number that. one. I like Soul Brother number one. That's Me pretty too. good. Me too. The hard, and the hardest working man in showbiz. Ain't that the fucking truth? Yeah, he is. This man. Ve- at several times, mm. he lets you know, James Brown is not only the show, he is also the business. Hell Yeah. And I found out too in the little little bit of brief research I did the the you know the scientific studies that oh, I go into these Ashley. deep deep dives. Uh, he James Brown himself, the real man, um, w- was pretty hard working. He he worked when it, when he was sick. He would go out and perform. He would put oh, on a, you know the same type of performance as he could, given whatever illness he was suffering from at the time. And uh, you kind of see that in little bits and pieces of the. There's, yeah. there's very, there's many moments where you can see that he is very fatigued on stage, and uh, but he's still giving the performance. He's still doing what he can, and uh, it all kind of, uh, it's all kind of portrayed in stream of consciousness because like I don't know if James Brown really was like if he if he was uh. A man like me who just uh, sh- sh- rambles on and on and on mm-hmm. and just kind of like flows with stream of consciousness and wherever the fuck it takes you. Um, but the film itself lends itself, lends to a, a nonlinear narrative where, you know, you start off in the very beginning where James Brown, much into his career, he's very famous. He owns a building. He goes to the building. He, he, you know, he drives up to uh, take a poo poo. And uh, when he goes into the bathroom, it smells, and he knows that somebody else has taken a poo poo in his in his yeah. bathroom. Yeah. So he goes out to his car, he gets a shotgun, and he comes back in and holds the people hostage. <laughs> Actually happened. <laughs> Actually happened. So I think they they you know this is maybe spoilers for this film actually, but. It is a real life thing. I think they showed that this was after he had received the news that his son died yes. in a car accident. Right, but we don't learn that until like Much the very end the of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really, I that's the thing about this film is whereas the last one was textbook, where it, where it followed Ray Charles, it had bits and pieces of his his childhood interspersed, mm-hmm. but most of it was linear. Right. I really enjoy Get On Up because it was nonlinear. It Things was would just, he, he would he would bounce so far like yeah. yeah, he would constantly bounce it throughout moments of his life. And it, it made it very fascinating. You would have a scene where uh, you know, as an adult, he would spot his mother and he would flash back to when he spotted his mother as a kid, uh, which I'll explain soon because I'm you know, I'm getting ahead of myself obviously, right. but so does this movie at times. Um, but then you yeah, wouldn't sure get does. the closure to his his spotting of his mother as an adult until much much later. It was just used to you know to bounce him back to childhood and, and explain some you know some aspects of his childhood. So it's it's very fascinating in how it's it's nonlinear, and it kept me on my toes. It kept me watching. 
Uh, mm. What also kept me watching is in that opening scene, when you have James Brown walk up and hold the people hostage, he forgives the lady, by the way. It was a lady who took a poo-poo in his bathroom. And, yeah, he you know, said, he, you, he did tell, right you, know, you, you did right by you. You did right by you. Now I have to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> the police started yeah. coming. <laughs> Oh my god, it's hilarious! <laughs> but like, when that happens, when that scene starts, when when he walks in, Whatever. when James Brown walks into that building, I was blown away because Chadwick Boseman, the the actor, the beautiful actor yeah. who was sadly lost, playing James Brown, did not look like Chadwick no, Boseman. He, he looked, looked like, like James, James Brown. Brown. It was weird. He, but it also, once the, you get close, you can tell that it is makeup. I, I will say maybe right. a touch more than the Ray makeup. Um, but but I mean, also how he just of, held his face, too. Yeah. Like, he still held his face in a certain way that it's just like, it was a completely different, like, look and feel. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, and then when he starts talking, like... I don't know. I honestly might have liked uh, just to get it out there. I might have liked Chadwick Boseman's performance as as James Brown more than I like Jamie Foxx's performance as Ray. Because I don't know. It's really hard. They're both so, it's so good. hard. I and I will say Jamie Foxx sang his own lyrics and everything, uh, right? Whereas Chadwick Boseman only did some singing. I couldn't oh, find okay. out what was him and what was James Brown, but. Most of the soundtrack was live James Brown recordings, um, so you know I will give I will give Jamie Fox that credit. But Chadwick Boseman did all of his own dancing, so yeah. that kind of balances it out because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James Brown is a James a, Brown moves. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, yeah. How the, many times have I, I, I done these splits? I don't know, <laughs> a couple thousand. Yep, and the first time I ripped my pants is in front of all these white people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good scene. Yeah, it is. Well, I love, that's another scene, too, because he's, he's performing in front of these, as, as we just said, he's performing in front of these white people. It's an all-white crowd, basically. And that that establishes one of his, uh, uh, another trait of this film is James Wall breaks, or James Wall, James Brown breaks the fourth wall a lot. Yeah, he does. Because in, in that scene alone, time slows down, and he looks about himself, and he's just like, man, I don't want to be performing in front of all these honkies. Like, yeah. this is just... He I, says I I'm in a scene. honky hoedown. <laughs> honky hoedown, that's what he calls this it. This movie's also a lot funnier than the other movie. It really is. <laughs> and, and But, like, in that moment, when, he re- when he's like, I don't want to be in this scene... He immediately cuts it, and he says this to the camera. You know, he's looking at the camera at times, and he'll say that kind of stuff. And he's just, like, cuts it to later that night where he's playing at a bar kind of thing. And, you know, it's, a, it's an all-black crowd, and he's having way more fun. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's in, he's in really digging the the, um, the, the show that night. Yeah. The atmosphere. Yeah, it's, it's live. And, I mean, because, I mean, all, all people who have performed on stage, I've performed some, and I hated it. Uh, but, you know professional actors and everything the audience makes your performance oh yeah you know it's like it, 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 it's always going to be different it, anyways yeah amplifies it thank you yeah because yeah. it's like it's always going to be different you know you're always going to have a different crowd mm-hmm. and how that crowd reacts you know affects your performance you know it's 100%. like if you, if you have people who are laughing more you're going to go out there and give more of a comedic performance kind of thing like the yeah. comedy that is yeah and I, and it's it's really sh- showcased in that one scene because when he's doing the show in front of the, the white people at the honky hoedown, <laughs> you know, it's very, it's very like a textbook James Brown performance. It's still damn good. Oh yeah. But he's not like going crazy, and you know, not, you don't see him like having as much it's fun subdued. as when it cuts to him at night. Yeah, yeah subdued. Thank you. Yeah. Because when it goes to him at night, he is pouring sweat and like doing all of his moves and everything. He's much louder, much more incomprehensible. Like <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> that was the that was the uh, Eddie Murphy joke. It when he does his impression, he's just like because he he James Brown did the breakdown, you know, where he would oh, he yeah. would say something, and then his backup singers would all basically repeat it. Um, Bruno Mars has a hilarious SNL skit. Where you know he he talks about the breakdown too. It, uh, it just look it up. It's fucking great. I love Bruno Mars as well. Um, but James Brown and and Eddie Murphy's skit 
would you know he would just start saying shit and the ba- the, ba- the backup singers would be like i don't know what the fuck james is saying <laughs> just say yeah and then so he, he just like yeah yeah <laughs> and then he would just laugh and then james brown would be like <laughs> and they're just like yeah yeah <laughs> all right all right oh what, uh, uh to get back to the movie though one thing i did love is uh how much they focused on one of james brown's bigger backup singers uh bobby bird um yes. one of his best friends yeah um go, starting out at least one of his best friends amazingly played by nelson ellis yeah uh whereas in ray all of the actors are good and jamie yeah. fox is fucking superb right and and get on up chadwick boseman is fucking superb and many of the other actors are pretty damn good as well. Yeah, and Nelson I agree. Ellis is like, one of them. Chadwick is obviously the star of this movie, but the other characters hit more like characters than they do in Ray. Right. Uh, They're and, easier for me to remember too, because like as we're yeah. as we're looking, I think it comes Ray, down to, to the directing because it's not like there was yeah. uninteresting scenes in Ray. There were very interesting scenes, and yes, the acting was very good. But Ray was just such the focus. There was no room for anybody else in, in the right. film. Yeah. And, and while Chadwick Boseman definitely fills up the entire atmosphere of this yeah. film, there's still much, like, m- a lot of room for everybody else. Like, and, and Bobby Bird, like, he has he has so many scenes where it's like you really feel some good emotion from Nelson Ellis. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. He had, I don't know if, it, sadly, this film did not apparently get nominated for anything. Yeah, uh, which is He's surprised fucking when awful. You said because Chadwick yeah. should have gotten, uh, yeah, he should have gotten something. He, he was amazing. yeah. Chadwick should have gotten nominated. And I think even Nelson Ellis for supporting actor should have gotten nominated. Like, he was very good. He had he, he had some uh, really touching scenes. Like I mean, especially the end scene. Even though it's all yeah. uh, James Brown singing at the very end, right. it's Nelson's emotions. Or, That's or where the acting is. Bobby's emotions. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. where the acting yeah. is in that scene for sure. Yeah, and especially when they 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 have a moment where they'll cut to just the silhouette of of Bobby Bird and his wife. Um, oh, a uh, Vicky, not Mrs. It's Vicky something. Vicky, but I guess Vicky Bird Vicky. probably. Where is Vicky on here? Vicky Anderson. Vicky uh, Anderson. Again, played by. Wait, is it? Is it? Because that's that's Anjanou Ellis from the last film. Uh, she was the t- she was the tying factor, I guess, between our f- our films. Here was that's Andrew really Ellis. funny. <laughs> yeah, we're bad people. We, I didn't I didn't know that honestly. But no, it's like I I really do think that both of them should have gotten nominated. Uh, I did want to take a brief segment here to mention who did get nominated for the 2014 best support or best yeah. actor. What's he award? Um, I remember being upset by this, and now I'm upset for many other reasons. Um, because that was the year that Michael Keaton was nominated for Birdman. Uh, uh, Benedict good. Cumberbatch for The Imitation Game, Bradley Cooper for American Sniper, Steve Carell for Foxcatcher, and the winner, Eddie Redmayne for The Theory of Everything. Yeah, but that um, was really good. Uh, but and, and man, and he, there's not a single non-white person no. in that list. Yeah, they're all white, and then four of them are biopic in in a way right uh, and so it makes me wonder you know i, I mean i'm sorry like I, I i know that the theory of everything was really good it really was but like bradley cooper for american sniper yeah i didn't see that <laughs> so i couldn't I'm so, say i'm sorry bradley but, but like and i did love steve carell and foxcatcher but like i haven't seen or, and, and even even been in a cumberbatch in the imitation game it's a good performance but like all three of them compared to Chadwick Boseman and Get On Up, what and even the Birdman fuck Academy, even Birdman. And- like, but 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 yeah, seriously. I, I, even if so, if Chadwick Boseman made it to the list, I would have think that I would have thought that he would win. If if it right. wasn't you know um, ten years ago, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ten years ago, yeah. there was a lot of snubbing going around for sure. But I mean, this one now that now that I've seen it, I don't know how I did not watch it. I mean, honestly, I really sadly didn't know Chadwick Boseman except for the Black Panther, right? And for uh, um, the Five Bloods, I watched that, uh, and 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 some other films I can't remember right now. But like, it, it, I didn't get to see his bigger performances. I'm really happy we got to watch this because 
I'm pissed now that he didn't win Best Actor back in 2014. Yeah. Because this fucking role is amazing. Like, <sighs> it, it, he true. gets the personality. He, he gives it so much life. Like, there's a moment where they're... Uh, and, and I feel like the whole synopsis is going to be nonlinear because the movie's nonlinear. So I'm sorry, audience members, uh, Couch Potatoes. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, there's there's a moment where he's on a plane going to Vietnam. He's convinced Lyndon B. Johnson to let him go over there and uh, do some shows for the for the troops. And he's, you know, he's carrying, he, he's bringing his uh, band members along with him. And they start getting shot at. And, you know, the, the planes have does get hit even um but like he he's up at the front talking to the captain the pilot and the pilot's like uh mr brown we're getting shot at and he's yeah. like yeah but we ain't gonna die yeah. and he's like we're not gonna die god <laughs> god put me on this earth he's not gonna take me off of it right now and it's yeah. just like <laughs> he, 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 just he said that attitude. He, he so this is something that comes up a couple times in the film but does not necessarily have something at the end to go with it i think right um is that he believes that he's not going to die because he was born dead, according to Aunt Honey. Right. Aunt Honey is played by Octavia Spencer, and she oh says, my God. "And she says that when he died, when he was born, his he was not breathing, and he was cold, and his aunt, great aunt, spanked him hard, and nothing happened, and then finally, you you." You open your mouth, you breathe, you sc- and then you just kept screaming and you didn't stop. Yeah, um, oh, man, the, the supporting characters in this really do help this film so much they too. Do. Like, because yeah, I love Octavia Spencer how, as Aunt Honey. They spend a lot more time in his youth, I feel like, than in Ray. Like, th- there's mm. a lot of flashbacks in Ray because Ray. It, it, I feel like they're really trying to show that he had some form of PTSD. Which a lot of yeah. addicts, uh, unfortunately, do, and that that they turn to uh, usage because of that reason to to run from that right. or something, you know. So he obviously had flashbacks, and according to the film, um, <clears throat> and he would see water on the floor because he was thinking about what happened to George, and but the yeah, water no, obviously wasn't him. there. Uh, he would he would see the he would feel the water. I think that's more important and hear it yeah. because uh, yeah. he only sees it one time specifically, and that was that's at the very end. That's right because he he is blind. I have to remember that that was visualization for us, not for him. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but in this movie, I'm trying to remember what I can, was actually talking about. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight gone. Oh, yeah. I wish I could play it back. To it too. Uh, oh, another thing about this movie, and, and it is you know a movie, a, a, a period movie, uh, and, and I think it's even worse than the other movie is that the, the woman characters don't have much. I think Aunt Honey is a very strong character, and she runs this. Right. I think it's a brothel that. Uh, uh, Basically, James Brown was sold to or left off uh, with by his dad because he wanted to go to the army just so he didn't have to deal with James. Raise a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Because the wife left. Susie left. Now, uh, just real quick, Susie Brown, his mom, is played by Viola Davis. And, you know, it's a very small role, but, you know, she's always fucking awesome and that's it's another powerful <clears throat> fucking character too like yes, i mean i agree with you the, very the, good the character. female characters yeah they don't have a lot of action in yeah. this film but like what they do have is fucking brilliant like they, octavia they, spencer viola davis viola davis has so many moments in this where i was like almost crying like yeah because yeah when, there's like three moments uh of her of her role in his life mm-hmm. and of course again it's all juxtaposed like it's it's all mixed and scrambled right throughout the whole storytelling process but those moments are just so fucking beautiful like and, and just from performance wise they're they're heart-wrenching in reality when you when when they happen because uh um she runs away 
as you mentioned, and she yeah. became a prostitute. Mm-hmm. And there was a moment where he was working for Aunt, uh, where James Brown was working for Aunt Honey, and he spotted his mom, and he's just like, you know, he, he yells at her, and he's just like trying to get her uh, to acknowledge him. Yeah, and, and she, she just won't. flat out. And, yeah. yeah, refuses Which is to, really sad and, because in the earlier scene when she runs away, she tries to take James with her, yeah. but uh, Joe Brown, played by Lenny James, uh, would not let her take mm-hmm. him. And, he, and right. you know, which is just the worst because you know, obviously he's an abusive person, and uh, but yeah. he also just does not want to take care of James. So why not let Susie yeah. take him? Like, and speaking of that too, both of these films, Ray and uh, Gone Up, you know, it's sins of your father. Like as you yeah. mentioned, his father had three. Uh, Ray's father had like three families, and and mm-hmm. Ray was always worried about that, but eventually grew up to become that. Right. So like to have all these different families, and then it's the same thing with with James. As you mentioned, the father was abusive. James, as this is very prevalent in this film. Yeah. Is very abusive. He he beats his wife. He beats his uh, all of his wives. I think. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know that they show him hit his first wife, but he definitely hits his second one. wife after he thinks that she was being a little too revealing. Not that yeah, though. Like, That's not what set him off though. It was uh, a neighborhood person looking at like. Yeah. He had no problem with the. Uh, the outfit until he perceived it was a problem i was really pissed at the character at that point yeah. but obviously it's something right. that james did in real life not necessarily that scene but he hit his wife they wouldn't have put it in the movie that's pretty deflammatory right. uh they wouldn't put it in yeah. the movie unless it was real um <clears throat> he did that with uh from what i had read he did it with a lot of his other um relationships as well where he was very abusive and he's even abusive to to his best friend bobby um, yeah because like in a, in a not like physical way yeah yeah, yeah. um and, it's like and, at and first and mates too he he is yeah, the yeah. boss he he met uh, he, right it kind of happens to him when dan Aykroyd's character gets involved and uh that's ben bart and it, it, he kind of yeah. becomes his yeah. manager and prom- some, I don't know, manager is probably the best word for it. Um, but when he gets involved, the company that Ben Bart works for, uh, I think is Atlantic, um, I think to- so. told them that, th- that it, it, that James Brown is the show, them being the famous right. flames. The band, he, the band he was in was called the famous flames. And Ben Bart was like, the show is James Brown. Now, if you guys want to stay on, it's going to be James Brown and his famous flames. And, yeah. um, you know, a lot of them didn't yeah, like didn't that. Like uh, I yeah. was a little con- confused by that scene because they all left like they quit. But then they were in right. the... the co- well, that was... It, it's explained in one of the... Because, again, it, being non linear it's really hard to follow yeah. sometimes. And I, I, I was thinking that, too. But there's a moment where Bobby Bird... Um, he has a, a talk with with Craig Robinson's character mm-hmm. Maceo Parker, uh, who and Craig was another member of the uh, of a backup you know backup band. Backup yeah, he plays saxophone. For, in thank one you. Of the yeah, bands, yeah. In, in the future too, not in like not the Flaming Birds, but not, uh, yeah, not the it, the Famous Flames. Yeah, uh, Famous Flames. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, there in that conversation though, Craig mentions he's like, "You're always doing this. You're always." You know, the members are always quitting. You're always talking them right back into coming back. Yeah. And it, it's implied that that's what happened is that. Right. Um, um, they all left when, when the when the station yeah. heads were like, it's got to be James Brown and his famous flames. And they're like, well, fuck this. We quit. Right. And then Bobby went out and brought them back as, yeah. as a friend. He was just like, we can do this still. You know, it's it's just a name as as James right. even tells Bobby. You know, he's like, it's just a name. And, 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 and then Bobby Bird, though just believes that James Brown is a star so hard. And he's, I mean, he's right, obviously. Yeah. Because here we are today. Um, But he's like, I thought it was going to be me. But then I, it was like the day I met him, I knew that this show was not going to be about me anymore. It's such a good scene. It really is. is. Um, But like, 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he, he that's like that's the moment where he like realizes too because he's like he's been supporting James Brown so fucking hard, uh-huh. you know, and he because he's his friend. He really does love this man. You know, can see past his many many issues, um, but you know, eventually he just he finally realizes he's like I gotta be me. Like I can't I can't be in this man's shadow my whole life, you know. And it's just like especially when. You know, he, he he finally gets the guts to like talk to James uh to James Brown about his own solo career. He's like, Let's do another mm-hmm. one of my own albums. And James is like, No. Why would we do that? And that's when yeah. that's when, you know, they had that huge fight. It's it's a good scene. I mean yeah, it's a heart wrenching scene. It's uh, really a- was that band quitting as well? Uh yeah. I- I think so. <laughs> but there was, there was it was the, right the after scene the, uh, where uh, so he likes to he liked to find people, and this was like as soon as he came, became the boss, something that he started to do. If they were late, they were yeah. fined. If they yeah, if they uh, mouthed off, they were fined. If they were interrupting uh, uh, rehearsal and he didn't think it was worth it, fine. Um, yep. <laughs> so. He uh, so and, and, and they got you know fed up with it because they also were not getting paid because yeah. he became in a lot of uh, he got into a lot of financial problems at one point, which they didn't really go yeah, into he, why he was in financial problems. Besides that, maybe well, it's, he it's, overstretched. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's another one of the, this film does have dialogue issues where a lot of it happens in dialogue exposition yeah. that is, uh, and that was another one of those. As Craig Robinson says. We know what's going on. You own this business. You own yeah. this business. You own this business. And yet they're all interchanging money between each other, which means you owe the government a shit ton of back taxes. Yep. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, and I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that, yeah. That's why they were quitting. They were just like, you can't even afford to pay the government. So either you pay us or we start telling people that you ain't paying. Yeah. Or we leave. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, rightfully so, you should never do your job for free. And, you know, there's no. other complaints they had. It was it was definitely Craig Union was the head of uh, Craig, <laughs> Craig Union. <laughs> Craig Robinson was the head of this little band's union. And they're like, listen, we're we are going to have our planned days off and not have rehearsals when you say we have a planned day off. And we're going to get paid on time. It's like very reasonable demands. Yeah. And it's like yeah. the fact that they're not being met is means that James Brown was not being a very good boss at that time. No. Um, yeah. His response to it all was, I'll think about it. I'll think about <laughs> it. And then somebody got really fucking pissed. He's like, no, fuck you, James. Drummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember it was the drummer because he threw his sticks down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> And you know what? He probably, you uh, know, he was probably like, I, I, you know, knowing that he's an explosive, abusive man, he yeah. probably was trying to stay cool. And, you know, he, he, he knew at this point he was in big trouble. He knew it before they confronted him. Uh, because yeah. Obviously, he's having money problems. So he just was, he was going to leave, probably cool off. And, you know, in a couple days, He'd figure out what to say, but that guy blew up. Or just completely and, ignore it. Or just completely ignore it, which was probably more likely. You're probably right. But when the drummer blew up, he was like, "No, <laughs> fuck you, all of you." <laughs> oh my god! And then he had, yeah, he had such a meltdown, and and through that whole meltdown, Bobby Bird stuck there. You know, Bobby yeah. was just like, "I'm still here, man." But then they, I, I think he, I think Bobby and his fight happened after the, he performed Yeah, it was live. years later after and, that, uh, yeah. Was it in Atlanta? I don't know. Is that uh, where they it was a like really that? big uh, opera house that they were in. I don't remember. Yeah. Live at the Apollo. Oh, okay. That's what it was. It was the Apollo. I think, yeah. And then, yeah, that's when, when uh, Bobby was just like, I think we should do another one of my own solo albums. You know, he's like, let's do me next. And, and James was like, no, nah, we ain't doing that. Cause nobody's here for Bobby bird. They're here for James Brown. Yeah. And, Oh yeah. It this hard, is a, uh, I, this, the shakedown is hard. And that's during the sad moment of this film where it's like Bobby or where uh, James starts losing pretty much everybody. Right. And yeah, it's, I, I really just love the tell of telling of this because it's right. like, the, there, there's so many moments that because it's it's so 
non-linear. Yeah, that the is way like that the, it's the cut, grief moments. Yeah, yeah. The way that it's cut, it, it, every scene leads into a scene that's in the past or in the future because they have a very strong link between those two scenes right and and yeah. that's really hard to do even in a long non-linear story like obviously you want to try try for that if you're going to go right, this right. route but they really pulled it off i felt like every single scene change yeah 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 i, I agree because th- i think there's like one moment in the middle where they cut to black and you know, start like the act two or yeah. act three or whatever, and and you have it starts off with James uh, fourth wall, you know, breaking the fourth wall, talking to the people about where he's at now. You mm-hmm. know, he's just like, so this is what's going on, you know, and it's like this is how famous I've gotten, and like that's like the only moment where it's like the scene didn't lead in from something else, you know, and and I still think they even nailed that right because it's just like they did it with a fourth wall break, and in like. I don't know when when James breaks the fourth wall. It's it's typically pretty fucking funny, yeah. and that moment's really good too because it, it leads into him just you know start performing on a, on the stage because he like he walks up on the stage and he's talking to the fourth wall while a stand in like in the background of James is, is performing, and yet the James we're seeing is breaking the fourth wall to talk to us, mm-hmm. and then he walks to a point where the James Brown in the background is no longer visible on camera. And then he goes out and takes that guy's place. You know, he goes. I mean, yeah. it wasn't an actual stand-in, obviously. It was James right. Brown. But, like, I thought it was really well done. I mean, it's obviously it's not technically that difficult to do on camera. Right. But I enjoyed that scene because he's singing in the background while he's talking to us. Yeah. And then he's like, now, hold on. I got to go perform. And then he right. just goes and steps and there, in. And I was just like, There are other really surreal, surreal parts in this yeah like there's a couple of moments in ray uh that are you know a little weird and trippy like when he's Mm -hmm. hallucinating the water or especially that last scene uh in the recovery uh that right the the addiction recovery can't remember what it's called rehab rehab um but there are a lot more weird moments in this because and i think it works because of that non-linear storytelling yeah because like they'll you'll just get like flashes of uh, different scenes where like his body movement is almost exactly the same but it pops back yeah. uh and, yeah. and you'll, you'll also there's also this moment that i didn't quite understand where they're all just saying his name over and over again <laughs> why well, yeah i think it was his his self uh, right um but it, self-centeredness yeah but it's like it goes like, across all the different storylines that we see mm-hmm. and uh, different people different characters just being like james brown and yeah. uh yeah and, and it, it i feel like it worked for the movie but I, i'm just not quite sure what the purpose was anyhow we should probably do closing statements on this we yeah that's uh, fair yeah i mean i i really enjoyed those scenes because it's just like it Especially again, I know we're we're harping up on the the nonlinearness so much, but like, um, I think it, it. I've been using the word juxtapose like awfully throughout this entire <laughs> episode, but here I actually mean it. Where it's just like you have these moments that are are awful, James Brown, where he's you know he's beating his his wife mm-hmm. or he's he's treating people like shit, and then they're they're juxtaposed with him doing you know good things yeah for the culture for music for everything like right. you know because th- there's so many moments where he'll, he he has a link to Lyndon B. Johnson and he's just like uh you know he wants to go visit you know Vietnam and like yeah. you know help the troops out and like That's when he help the public image down. of what's going on yeah yeah and, and even when when I'll get it right this time when Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and in this film yeah. um you know he has a he has a performance where you know th- they wanted to cancel it and he told them no you can't cancel it because if you cancel it we'll have another riot you know it's just like yeah these they, people, they, they want they to cancel it to prevent a riot but right uh he's like if you do cancel it you're gonna have uh 
you know, 10,000 angry people yeah. on your front lawn. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, he, he talked the, the mayor uh, into letting it happen. Mm-hmm. And when it happens, when he's when he's performing, people get up on stage and the police start trying to beat them off. Yeah, very violently, and, too. Yeah, very violently. But he, he eases the whole situation. You know, he... he, he admonishes both the police and the audience members yeah and he's just like he and, and it's kind of weird it's like it's it kind of just kind like of weird. you don't really know exactly where he stands but it, it's so it's so well the editing is so well done throughout everything that it's just like those scenes yeah it's just like you, you, you kind of like seeing like this guy who is he's larger than life and you don't really like him because he has so many bad qualities yeah. And yet it's but like he's separating obviously the artist a genius. He's doing so much. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. think that's why Bobby Bird's character is so important because right, uh, he, right. he he's he lets you know like yeah you stick with him though because he's doing stuff that nobody else can. This is James right. Brown's music. That's what they called it. Ja- yeah. James Brown's music. James Brown music. That's what they called it. Yeah, uh, before it's a genre they knew of itself. <laughs> yeah. Before they yeah. called it funk and soul yeah, it's, and it's, whatever. It's good shit, man. Yeah. I really like it. I guess my closing statement on it is like, you know, everything about it is really good. Like, I really enjoy it. It, it can be a little confusing at times. It can be a, a little more, you know, I don't know, humorous than it probably should be. And, I don't know. And In some points. Moments. Yeah. But, uh, and, and it's, it's all produced by Mick Jagger. Because he, you know, he, he wanted. To, I guess he's he's been trying to make this film for a while, and, and he finally made it, which I think is great. That's uh, really funny. Given I guess the he, scene where they got bumped for the Rolling Stones. I know, uh, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that was that was one of the things. Is he upstaged the Rolling Stones because they uh, he, yeah. he was forced to go before them, and he went out and put on such a damn good performance they couldn't fucking follow it up. <laughs> they, they looked so they still, they looked kind of lazy when they went out there because he just he just fucking tore the place up but i mean again just like when the last one where where jamie fox you know had a stellar performance uh chad bozeman bozeman had an amazing yeah, performance here i he fucking did. i was blown away and uh you know i give it three and a half stars again i don't think this is a three star film being raised to three and a half though right i think this is just a three star three and a half star films like it's, it's a very good it's phenomenal film. great acting all around <clears throat> yeah i i agree uh, uh it's it is 100 percent a full face movie i uh, just uh, you know uh, that's newer to the yeah. rating system if you yeah. haven't been listening you know this is not really fair but you know it is my rating system so i can do whatever i want uh but i feel like it's not getting a face and a half just because i don't really like some of the things james brown does but it's a it's a biopic right. it's like you can't yeah. you can't decide who this real life human was in real life um yeah. <clears throat> uh, my four but, star rating is is required to be able to be watched many fucking times and right I myself returning to this movie many fucking times. not not anytime super recently but damn it was pretty right. good uh and it you know good. maybe it if i really like good. james brown's music just a little bit more uh i could return to it a lot more but yeah right. it, i mean and i do list actually listen to james brown but I, he's got some damn good songs he does um so does ray charles yes that i agree i think i like <laughs> ray charles music better um i like I, i've i've taken a, a very big liking to funk and and i feel like funk oh, comes a funk. lot from yeah yeah i feel like james brown delivered 100%. a lot to that just as much yeah. but yeah I, I really enjoy soul and, and funk and like i feel like I'm, I'm more coming into james brown than i would have with ray charles that was my right. Ray Charles was my childhood. Now See, I'm getting up to the James. I Brown. like songs with a story. Not to say that he that James Brown right. doesn't have story in his songs, but that is very important for Ray Charles. Is yeah. is the story, and and, and you know he lo- that's why he will, loves country music, and, and that's why he has a Western album. <laughs> right, and I think it's also important, even though it's very horrible to say but like there are moments where it's like i can't understand what james brown is saying <laughs> it's <laughs> like, true though 
it, it's I, true. Like, yeah. if I didn't have the subtitles on when good. I was watching this, <laughs> it sounds great. Like, yeah. I'm not going to deny that. It sounds fucking brilliant and beautiful. And when I know what he's saying, it definitely, I can hear it. Right. But if I didn't have the subtitles on, there are so many moments in this movie, I'd be like, what did you just say, James? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, it's awful of me. I know. I'm sorry. So, which one wins this uh genre oh. smackdown get on up easily for me i i'd have i have to agree i i think just all in all it is a a, a better movie uh yeah. i think the two performances though are like right neck and neck for me it would be oh, yeah. really they hard pretty, for yeah. me to say which who did the better yeah. performance both very good <laughs> both oscar according to the academy yeah, According that's to the true. Academy, but fuck that because yeah, fuck them. He he should have gotten an Oscar for if he was in the running for it. I think he would have won. I mean, oh, easily. Yeah. I think so too. And now I gotta watch Mama Rainey's Big Black yeah. Bottom because yeah. now, I that's think the one that, he was actually nominated for. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the few Bozeman ones. Bozeman ones that I haven't seen. Um, have you seen The Five Bloods? I mean, no, he has I, a very small role too. in the Five Bloods. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. that one either. It's very small, but it's it's still. I like that movie. Well, uh, you will be missed, as everyone uh, has said already in the last few years. Yeah. Uh, but you are you were just fantastic, Chadwick Boseman, and uh, I'm yeah. very happy that we have you as well, Jamie Fox. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, both. Thanks for listening, you two. Yeah, thanks for listening to our show <laughs> to get that direct. Thank you from the faceless Leon. Yeah. James, uh, Jamie Fox is listening, and so is Chadwick Boseman. Wherever the afterlife is taken. Oh, I'm him. sure he I is. I don't know. I'm sure. I don't know what faith he was of. Yes. So. <laughs> what, what, whatever afterlife you're in, uh, fond wishes, um, and yeah. Also, just two great musicians that I enjoy their music. It was a good episode. A good, yeah. at least a good it, watching. I hope yes, it's a good episode. It was a good episode. Thank <laughs> you for listening. <laughs> no need to comment. No need to leave any feedback. We know. We are aware. Is one of the best. This is the best episode. And thank you for oh, being here. Man. It wasn't though. <laughs> no, it, but we, I, I think that it was. I highly recommend both of the films. So at the very least, yeah, I do too. It was uh, a good watching experience. Yes, and uh, as uh, as a farewell, as a signing off uh, again. It, this is Black History Month in February, mm. and to the uh, certain states in the United States, <laughs> Florida. Who think that uh, American history is Im- is possible without African American history? You're fucking wrong. Yeah, uh, African American history is vital to our our country. And yep. again, thank you for listening because it's important to remember. Yeah, uh, and that's why, of course, we. I mean, it shouldn't be just a month. It should be a whole fucking year as it is. But still, right, Black History right. Month. We should you know, talk about it every day, and it, it, and then it maybe will be better. And it should be in our fucking schools. Yes. Regardless of what certain states, yes. <laughs> Florida, think. Yes. So. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> That's my little political moment. I am the Green Traveler from Gorge. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the Faceless Leon. Safe travels and good night. Green and Faceless on the Couch is a proud production of Fiction Works 19. Are you a fan of the show? feel free to contact us at greenandfacelessfans at gmail.com or visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash greenandfaceless. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe or rate us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for listening.